webinar. During the next 15 minutes, I will be covering why the rules have changed, what has changed, and what we are doing, and then we'll go through a few examples. We have all heard the stories about borrowers showing up for closing only to discover their fees are much higher than expected. The purpose of this revised rule is to help borrowers know their fees and allow them to shop their mortgage before closing. These rules went into effect on July 30th. In summary, the revised rule expands the initial till requirements, adds a seven-day waiting period from the initial till disclosure, restricts collection of upfront fees, and adds a three-day waiting period for redisclosures. I will be going through these details in the next slides. The first revised rule, the initial till, is required on all loans within three days of the application. The three-day requirement is not a change. The change is that, is that second homes and investment properties now require the till disclosure. Once the initial till is provided, the revised rule now requires a seven-day business day waiting period before the loan can close. Definition of business day is all calendar days except Sundays and federal public holidays. We don't see the seven-day waiting period as an obstacle because generally the closing date is not within seven days of the application. However, with that said, while other companies may not issue the till until the main office receives the application package, we issue the till at time of application. Therefore, the clock starts ticking earlier. This means we don't have to build more time into our process and can close at the convenience of the borrower. Before I go on to the next change, I want to define receipt as per the regulation. There are three ways borrowers can receive a copy of the till disclosure. The most basic is in person. If a till is delivered in person, it is considered to be received that day. But if a till disclosure is mailed via the U.S. Postal System, the regulation says that the postal system needs three business days for the borrower to receive the disclosure. This is referred to as the mailing rule. Now, we know it doesn't necessarily take three days for a letter mailed from our office in New Britain to reach one of our customers who lives in New Britain, but that is the regulation. The third way a borrower can receive the disclosure is email. The three-day mailing rule applies unless we can confirm email receipt, which would require that the borrower reply to our email that they received the disclosure. Since confirmed receipt is what starts the clock ticking on the required waiting periods, our solution to delivering and receiving till disclosures is to obtain email addresses for all of our borrowers. The new rule prohibits lenders from imposing a fee other than a credit report fee before the initial till is received by the borrower. This means that until the borrower has received the till, the appraisal fee cannot be collected. For instance, if the application is taken over the phone and the initial till is mailed, the three-day mailing rule applies and the appraisal fee cannot be collected until the fourth day. If you are concerned about quick appraisal ordering, we have the solution. We issue the till disclosure at time of mortgage application. Therefore, we can collect the appraisal fee and there's no delay in ordering the appraisal. The new rule now requires a redisclosure if the initial till APR changes by more than one eighth. Once redisclosed, the closing cannot occur until three business days after the borrower has received the redisclosure. Again, received is defined by actual receipt. Things to drive an APR change are switching the rate and points, changing the closing date, which changes the per diem interest changes to loan programs or down payment, changes to attorney fees. We've partnered with our attorneys and they have agreed to set fees for our borrowers. But if a borrower chooses to use their own attorney, it's really important that borrowers know the fees associated with their own, represent, own representation at time of application to prevent a delayed closing. Other fees such as closing, underwriting, processing, courier fees, we also have fixed fees. That means there are no changes or surprises on the HUD-1 when the borrower is ready to close. Although the regulation allows waivers on the waiting period if there is a bona fide personal financial emergency, at this time we are not accepting waivers. 
According to the mortgage banker's attorneys, the bar has been set real high on what is considered personal financial emergency. The example used was the seller of the property would go into foreclosure if the closing did not occur. Now, we can make this easier. We have a solution, but first, let's do a few examples. I'm going to illustrate the dates for October, and then together we will go through the month of September. In October, this application is taken on Monday, October 5th, and the contract closing date is Friday, October 30th. So let's first look at the seven-day rule. That's the rule that shows the loan cannot close until seven business days after the initial till. That would bring us to October 14th as the earliest date the loan can close. Now we're chugging along through the month and the borrower decides that they want to pay more points to lower their rate. If we can confirm receipt of the redisclosure via email, the last possible date to redisclose and still close on the contract closing date of October 30th would be October 27th. However, remember that if we can't confirm receipt, we would have to disclose by Friday, October 23rd. The three-day mailing rule applies, and then we have to wait the three-day waiting period. If we are redisclosing on the 28th or the 29th, the closing will be postponed. So let's do another example using September. This is a quick closing. The application and the initial till is provided to the borrower on Wednesday, September 2nd. So the question is, when is the earliest date the loan can close? I'm going to give you a minute before I reveal the answer. If you said September 11th, you are correct. Let's count the days, starting with day one, Thursday, going through to seven days, meaning the earliest date the borrower can close. Now, the contract closing date, remember, is going to be Tuesday, September 15th. So if we can confirm receipt, the latest date that we can redisclose the till is also on September 11th. If we cannot confirm receipt of the redisclosure, the latest date to redisclose would be on Tuesday, September 8th. If we are redisclosing on September 14th, the closing is now going to be delayed. We've developed the slide calendar to assist in determining the latest dates for the initial truth and in lending disclosures. We know it can be confusing, and we wanted to come up with a tool that would simplify the dates. This calendar does take into consideration Sundays and holidays. Our McHugh reps have these available for you, and they will be happy to provide you with one if you so desire. We wanted to come up with something, again, that would simplify this complicated process. The insert is for 2009, and our reps will be coming around in December with 2010 inserts. So in closing, we are aware that these changes seem complicated and for many may be concerning. I'm happy to tell you that we are embracing these changes and see this as a great opportunity. We feel that this revised rule will result in more informed borrowers and help protect the integrity of the real estate market. We are committed to becoming TIL experts and are doing several things to make these changes go smoothly. First, we are being proactive to communicate with our borrowers and partners. This communication effort enables us to set reasonable expectations and avoid disappointment at closing. Secondly, we have added fields to our loan processing computer system to verify that information is disclosed in a prompt manner throughout the entire approval and closing process. This will ensure that the borrowers can close on time. As you can see, accurately tracking till-related dates is a very important part of the change. By embracing these changes, we feel this will set ourselves above our competitors by ensuring that the closing will happen on time. If you have any questions, please contact your McHugh rep. They can answer your questions and will be happy to provide the slide calendar to you to simplify this complicated change. We thank you for attending our Truth in Lending Changes webinar and we ask for your continued support.